Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the books and resources we are using for our unit on Marco Polo. Now this unit is part of a larger main lesson block that covers the Silk Road, the, that time period from about uh, 500 BC all the way to about the 1500s and it covers from North Africa all the way to China. So because it was such a large area and such a, a large time span, we ended up breaking this up into a lot of smaller units so that we could get through the material that we have. So I want to share with you the books that we have on Marco Polo. I also want to share with you how we actually put together our unit studies, how I lesson plan for them, and what other resources we like to include in our main lesson block. The first book I want to show you is called Marco Polo. This is by Demi. There are a lot of books in this series by this author. They're all really well done. The illustrations are really beautiful and the, there's quite a bit of information. It's not your typical picture book that you might be able to read within a few minutes and look through the pictures. This one's a bit more of a commitment, but I do like how extensive the writing is because in a single picture book like this, you can get a lot of information and a lot of beauty out of the, out of the illustrations. So when I'm putting together our unit studies, I'm usually teaching more than one child and I'm trying to look for resources that are going to work for young students as well as older students and still provide enough information and uh, inspiration for our unit. So adding in these kinds of picture books are really great because the older children can still enjoy the picture books because we're still reading them to the younger ones and the younger ones have something that they can enjoy looking at and listening to even if they're not up to the ability to read the content because it might be uh, beyond their abilities. Now, all of the books that I'm showing you and generally all of the books that I share with you for our main lesson blocks are ones that I am reading aloud or that I'm using as resources to put together our lessons. On occasion, I do have books that I assign to my children, but that doesn't start until about fifth or sixth grade at the earliest. Generally, all of our lessons are ones that I am doing aloud and presenting to my children. All right, so this book is a great addition because if you didn't have any other book that I'm going to show you today, this would be enough to go through the life and times of Marco Polo. It, it, would, it comes with these gorgeous illustrations and give you enough information to cover his life and times and it would be complete. But I do have more to share with you. I have Animals Marco Polo Saw. When I saw this book, I thought this was an amazing addition to not just our unit on Marco Polo, but also on our greater unit on the Silk Road. So you'll probably see this book again. But this is a great take on a subject area that you're probably already familiar with. You're pro you probably already know about Marco Polo and the Silk Road. But now we're going to look at it from a different perspective. We're going to look at it from the animals that he saw, which I love this idea of bringing in a different angle to something that you already know or a different perspective to the storytelling. Like suppose the story was told from the perspective of the animals, for instance. I really like that take on on books because it just brings a different angle to what you're studying. So this is one that I am super excited to have. I have to say that our Silk Road unit is one that has been revisited often in our homeschool because we keep adding to it, which means we never are finished with it. So my son has already read this book, but this is definitely one that I want to read aloud again this time and bring it to my daughter who hasn't read this book yet. Oh, and the illustrations are so beautiful. They make great inspiration for illustrations for your main lesson book. A main lesson book is generally just a blank notebook. Sometimes there are lined pages as well. And it's a place where the students can put their work uh, that they're doing for their main lesson block. So we don't usually have worksheets and quizzes and tests, but we do have main lesson books where my students will do illustrations for the lessons that we've done and then write narrations about that lesson. Who was Marco Polo? This is one book that, or one, uh, a series of books, because there are many in the series that goes through so many different biographies. This is one book that I often assign to my students only because we end up with so many other resources that we don't always have time to read everything aloud. And this is one book that I really like assigning to my students because it's very simple to read. I think that the grade level is maybe middle elementary. The illustrations are super simple. They're usually just pencil or pen drawings. And I, I find this to be a really amazing resource, not just for children, but for adults too, because sometimes you have either picture books that are super simple or you have 
books that are intended for adults which are really heavy and dense and this is a really nice middle ground that gives you a, a great overview of the of the person's life so it's a really wonderful biography it's written simply so you can get through it quickly and it's informative so you understand that person's life and you get a nice glimpse about it. You get just enough detail. So I really, really like this series of books. I find them to be appropriately well written. They're not the highest caliber, but I find them not to be the dumbed down versions of some books that just kind of you know, don't appeal to me. So I really like this series. And the reason why I, this is one thing that I would assign to my students is because I love to read the picture books aloud. And I like to read the, the books that are more dense that I don't think that they're going to enjoy reading on their own. So this is a nice one that they can read on their own. However, if I had the time, I would totally read these aloud because I really like them. For our history book, or for our history main lesson blocks, I try to also include some historical fiction, something that the kids can read independently if they are at that age and they enjoy it. And plus, what I really like about historical fiction is that you end up learning a lot about that time period or about that person in history or about the, you know, uh, whatever situation is going on. You tend to learn a lot in a really enjoyable fashion. And, and previously in our history units, I found that we could read a lot of information and a lot of living books and we just get lost in all of that but we read one historical fiction and it puts it all into context in a really engaging way so I love historical fiction now I have not read this book so I can't tell you much about it it is on Marco Polo that's why I've added it here it's a, a fun a fun book that I think would be about middle elementary so not a super engaging more in-depth historical fiction but a great addition if you have younger students or if you have an older student that's just a voracious reader and just wants to read everything then it's nice to have that on hand as well. Marco Polo for kids. There are a number of these books in this series and we have them for other biographies for Galileo and, and a few others. And I'm finding these books while they are, they do contain a lot of information. So they are a great resource. They're not super engaging as read alouds. And so I have struggled tremendously incorporating these books into our main lesson blocks because the information just tends to be a little bit dry and a little bit dense and not super lively to read through. There are some projects throughout and I love that about this. I love adding hands-on projects. So I love the fact that there are projects added in this book because it gives you the opportunity to do some hands-on projects for your units and that's something that I'm really big on. So we'll definitely be pulling some hands-on projects from this book so that we can incorporate that into our main lesson block. But as as a resource, this might be something that you as a teacher go through and maybe re, uh, retell some of the portions of this book. I just found it to be a more challenging read aloud than I had expected. And because I found it challenging as a read aloud, if I assign this to my students, the chances of them reading it and enjoying it and getting something out of it are pretty slim. So for dense books, I try to read them aloud so that I can bring some liveliness to them and some discussion to to our lesson. You wouldn't want to explore with Marco Polo. I really like this series of books. I find them to be kind of whimsical and kind of fun. The illustrations are a little bit silly, but the content itself is usually really spot on. It's usually just enough. It gives you a great overview. The little captions are kind of fun and silly to read. It brings some humor to some heavier topics, and it's I find them to be really engaging. They're not the highest quality picture books or resources, but I've enjoyed adding them in whenever possible. My children really like them. I like them and they don't take much time to read. And it's just a great addition to be able to get through information in a very easy manner with some fun illustrations. And on occasion, we have taken the illustrations as inspiration for our own drawings, for our chalkboard drawings, or for drawings in our main lesson book. The next book I want to show you, I absolutely love this one so far. This is called Adventures on the uh, on the ancient Silk Road. And we have used this book before in the past, the, the last time we did this unit uh, back in 2013, 2014. And at the time I had my son read this book aloud or read this book silently to himself and and add the narrations and the illustrations into his main lesson book. So I hadn't actually read this one the first time around. This time around, I am using this as a read aloud for my children and it is superb. I absolutely love it. We've only read one chapter. There are only three chapters and they go through different 
historical figures of the past. So there is one on Marco Polo, and so that's why I'm showing it to you here, but it, the whole book is not just on Marco Polo. So the one that we already read was so well written, so engaging. It was a page turner. We just kept reading it until we got to the end. It was so well done that I'm assuming that the rest of the book is like this, but even if you just bought it for that one first chapter, it's still super amazing. Highly recommend this book. I also want to share with you a book that's going to show up in more of these main lesson blocks. This one's on camels, just because there are uh, a lot, because there's so much desert that's being covered in these journeys, uh, camels were primarily used for those journeys. And so we, we thought we would add in a little bit about camels and you could even turn this into its own unit on on animals of the Silk Road or animals of the region and explore other animals that were used either for transportation or for food. And so we're, we went ahead and we added this one in. Also, when we're putting together our main lesson blocks, I like to write on the back of our resource how we plan to use it or who it's being used for or how we're using this. and. In this case, because I had, you know, I had forgotten about this book, but because I had written some notes on the back of it when we were putting this unit again together, then I had some information about, about this book and what, how we use it in the past because we use a lot of books to, we include a lot of books in our main lesson blocks. And I know this is not a typical Waldorf approach because these would be considered resources that the teacher uses in order to present the lessons, but I end up reading them aloud to my children. And so have, having that on the back of the books really helps me at, when I am revisiting these resources because we use so much, I forget about them. So I really, really like the full back sticky post-its. These are sticky all the way to the very end. And what I like about that is that they stay in place and they don't, they don't get ripped off when I'm putting my books away. And so again, here, I will just add the notes that of how we're using the book this time and how much I love it so that when we finally get to our review video, I have my notes on which resources we really loved and we want to use again and which resources weren't that engaging because we are using our educational funding to buy a lot of these books. Some of them I actually picked up from the library bookstore and, you know, or secondhand, or I know that we, uh, or I look for them because I know that we've used them. And so I'll, I'll add them into our collection or I'll add them even if we already have them and I'll share them with friends because we like them so much. And so I will, uh, I lost my train of thought, but <laughs> I will write down um, my notes on them so that I can share with you um, afterwards how we like them because we're using our educational funding. I can buy a lot of these books, but uh, not all of them are winners. And so if you have a limited budget or you just want to add a couple of resources, it's really important that I'm sharing with you the ones that we really loved so that you are not buying all of them and finding that they're not going to be suited for you. So when we are putting together our main lesson blocks in history, I also like to add in some cooking as much as possible. Those are the most memorable lessons for my children. And I have like a really simple Chinese cooking cookbook here. This is from 1996. It is super old. It's one of the very first cookbooks that I ever bought <laughs> after I got married. Um, and we, I, uh, we have used this so, so much in the past, but then we just kind of fell out of it and we didn't really use it much anymore. And so I'm really happy to pull it out again and reintroduce some of these modern versions of Chinese uh, recipes into the mix. Sometimes we try to do something that's pretty authentic, but it also is difficult to find historical cookbooks. So we will, for me, it's more the spirit of the lesson when it comes to cooking and not being historically accurate and and that's fine it's something that the children can really enjoy and feel engaged in and so even if it's not exactly historically correct the fact that we are doing something that's the spirit of the lesson really has lasting educational effects for them so uh bringing in a, a chinese cookbook i thought was a great addition for this unit the next thing I want to show you is something that we try to add into our main lesson blocks, and that's a lot of games or things that we can do for our opening activities just to kind of get into that learning space. And this one's called 10 Days in Asia. This is a geography game that we really, really like. We have them for 10 days across Asia, 10 days across Africa, 10 days across Europe, and 10 days across the USA. 
So it comes with a political map that's current up to the point of production and uh, all these cards. So the, this is an older game and I know that some of you may struggle to find it and I really apologize. If there's something that's more current that you could use instead of, I think that that, that would be great to use a geography game that can keep you engaged and, and help you learn about the, the region. Absolutely add them in. These ones come with little cards and different transportation cards in order to get you through this area in the 10 days. And the cards come with the name of the country as well as the population and the area as and the uh, capital. And then you have uh, your transportation cards and your little these little holders here to hold your cards and I know that these are made out of wood but I think the current ones are made out of plastic so that's kind of a bummer because the quality was really well done when we bought these and it's been about 15 years since we purchased these so great addition love adding in the games especially the geography games for our history units it really helps the children get a, a get an idea of where we are studying and I don't really do geography for the younger children I don't do it until probably middle to upper elementary when they have a better understanding of their place in the world and their place in the city and the family it's a very abstract concept to try to talk about geography for young children because the world is so vast and even for us adults like we sometimes are blown away by how vast it is and yet how small our world is at the same time well, I want to share with you one more resource before we move into our hands-on projects. This is Saudi, um, this is a Ramco wor world, and this is a magazine that's really well done as far as the quality, the illustrations, the writing. This is new for me. That these are, these are, these have been around for ages, but, uh, this was a hand-me-down from someone who shared this one with me because we were studying you, different things on the Silk Road. So we have a couple of resources here. This one's for Marco Polo. And so I've added this, this article in. I don't know much about it. And there's one about Imbatuta, which we are also doing. And so we're adding these in. Lots of explorers. <laughs> so we're adding these in to just have a current article reference, but it's, it's just an addition. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say rush out and look for these because there are other resources, but it's something that we happen to have on hand. So when we're doing our history units, we love our hands-on projects. And I want to share with you a few things that are going to show up in our China or ancient China main lesson block as well. This one's called Discover China Ancient Dig Kit. And we love our dig kits. They are something that we've been adding to our our lessons for years this one comes in like a plaster uh like a plaster dig kit these ones take a little bit of time and if you have really young children you may need to help them with it only because it takes a while to get to your treasure and these dig kits usually come with everything that you need the little excavation tools and because we've been doing these dig kits for so long we have amassed a variety of excavation tools so usually pull them all out when we're doing our kits so I have uh, one of these for each of the children who are going to be doing this unit and it looks like you can unearth some really awesome replicas which is super cool because because I love having these things, even if it wasn't a dig kit, I love having these replicas whenever possible just to give you a feel of the unit and the time period and the location. But having it in addition as a dig kit is going to be a really great hands-on project. So I'm really excited to add this one in. We also have National Geographic Imperial China 4D Puzzle. This is super cool. We have never used one of these before. Looks like you can also go online and get some really cool, uh, add-ons for this, uh, for this uh, puzzle. So it comes with the puzzle, but also it comes with these parts that are a little bit raised. So that's super cool. That's probably the Great Wall of China and some other historical markers as well. So this is something that I'm really excited to add to our unit. And we're going to be using this again with our ancient China unit. One more thing. The last thing I think I want to show you is another hands-on project. And this one, for, for some of these hands-on projects, I went ahead and I got two of them because we've got our two kids working on these. And sometimes we make a hands-on project a group activity and sometimes we get multiples of them. So the dig kits and these kinds of projects are usually ones where we'll get multiple kits because each child will want one. But for instance, like the big puzzle or maybe the uh, we have a couple of 
Great Wall of China kits. Those are more like a group project. So this is going to be a Terracotta Warrior painting project. This is by Art and History. And they have really, really great products. So well done. I really like Art and History. We have used them for multiple units, uh, historical units. And so they, they're, it's this really beautiful, uh, clay or ceramic replica. And then it comes with the paint for you to paint it. And then of course the little tray and paintbrush. So maybe, you know, not the best for environmental because it comes with a little styrofoam plate. But other than that, I really, really like the kits. I think they're a great hands-on project and it's such a unique addition because you just don't see a lot of these things available. This would be quite a challenge to try to recreate something like this. And so I'm, I'm glad to be able to incorporate those hands-on projects that are pre-made as kits whenever possible. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed this look at the resources we're using for our Marco Polo unit. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more information. That link is down in the description box below. You can tap on the screen right now to check out some of the projects we're doing for our history blocks. You can check out those playlists. That link is also in the description box below. And if you want to see how our homeschool is progressing on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.